James time arc seems to be much, much longer, much more gradual, and seems to embrace a wider perspective in terms of what you know we loosely call ascension. It's more elaborate than we've imagined. And yet at the same time, it's very simple because he draws us back to the six heart virtues. He draws us back to this place where we are focused on getting to this grand portal. And so how do you view Ascension from James' standpoint as opposed to the way it's kind of been, I will say, marketed in the general New Age perspective? Well, I would think that the way that uh, uh, John and I would have looked at it this way, it's, it's the progress of of taking away and getting to the sovereign integral uh, concept that he talks about where reality and you, you're coming from your heart at the higher dimension the higher fourth dimension so everyone is on the ascension path but it's just where is your where is your uh, what book are you reading are you reading your personality book are you reading your book of the soul and it's kind of like that choice uh, over time <clears throat> excuse me uh, that I think that he's coming from. Uh, John explained the kind of the, uh, as James explained, it kind of like a wave, not a specific date, if I'm correct, Mark. It's kind of like a wave that comes and then the energy dissipates a little bit and then it's stronger and stronger and, and, and then it's going to continue until we reach the point of the grand portal where we really do scientifically know that. Does that help? Yeah. <clears throat> it does. It does. I because again, you know, we're looking at something that's very simple and yet very complex at the same right. time, and that's the art of what James is trying to do in this in his work. Well, I think I would I would add one thing to that, um, if I may, Randy, and that is that you know, ascension is is uh, oftentimes looked at as being a more personal event, and you know, it's it's an it's an ascension of an individual, um, and not necessarily of a species. And I think what the Grand Portal deals with is it really focuses on the species right. level. And absolutely, the, absolutely, Mark. Yeah, and, and so it's, it's the distribution of knowledge to the entire species through right. something that will be the equivalent of the Internet in 2080, uh, whatever that might be, but, but uh, a way for the, the entire species to really participate in this incredible discovery that the human soul can be experienced and shared and uh, indisputably recognized as being the, the, the core identity of a human being. And uh, when, that, when that day occurs, it's obviously going <laughs> to foreshadow a lot of massive changes. Um, and so that's something that takes a lot of time. It's, it, it takes a lot of preparation. It can be hundreds, thousands of years that will be living in that time. Uh, um, will have different human instruments. They they will uh, atomically. You know, uh, there is this sort of evolution that's going on. That's you know creating this this uh, you know you can call it a gradual ascension. You might say um, as as a, in evolutionary terms. But it is a sort of gradual ascension. It's not something that just you go from zero to a hundred, boom, in an instant, and you're ascended. Um, it's more of this sort of gradual ascension that's generational and that is occurring in such a way that, that uh, the human instrument, that is the body, the body and the emotions and the mind, are being developed uh, through what's going on at a cosmic level, cosmic rays, um, ex you know, expressions of new science, of new understandings within religion and spirituality, etc. All of these things become sort of the alchemical forces that evolve the human instrument in such a way that in the year 2080, people will be more open and willing and accepting of this, even though some of the governmental forces, some of the darker entities, obviously will not be excited about this uh, event and will want to, you know, pull it away from our grasp, feeling it's too dangerous. Um, it's going to be too much of a massive change. And so I think that's, that's a part of this difference between Ascension and the Grand Portal is that um, as, as it's really at this level of a species. And when this Grand Portal will be in a position of either embracing it or rejecting it. And the, the way James has written about this is that because it has been so prepared for this, that it wasn't pushed on them too early, um, the, the preparation is going, is going according to plan, etc. They will embrace it, and 
they will embrace it in such a way that they will resist any of the dark sort of forces that will try and cloud it or uh, make it something that it's not uh, as a fear kind of a reality and and so the distribution of this is coincident with the internet it's it's absolutely a, a, a big part of it the internet is is evolving to become the the device that makes this possible in terms of the distribution and uh, and so it's not by coincidence that all of these these elements are coming together um, it's being orchestrated and prepared and and uh, uh, developed over time and I think books like Quantusum are in a sense showing the recipe for this and showing what's to come and trying to give a sense of, of the direction of this and inspiring people to become involved in it even even though they may not be around in the year 2080 or whenever that this actually occurs um, or at least in their present bodies I'll say um, they they can still feel alignment to it and they can still lend their support of it and uh, help it in a sense uh, assist in it in a lot of ways, I think uh, one of the great frustrations that I feel, and I even see it in the comments that are coming through uh, on the uh, on the chat, is the sense that we as human beings want everything now. We want an expedient experience. We want, and I think that's the appeal of the ascension thing, is that it's like ascension now, but we're really working through a long arc process, and. One of the insights that I had into Wingmakers that really reframed it for me was this concept that the Wingmakers, on one level, are us in a very distant future. And I, I, I think that needs to be amplified because that's something that I heard James say even in the interview that you did with him back in 2008. Can you speak to that a little bit? I'll try. Um, <laughs> the it, it, it's true what you say, that in a sense, humanity is, is um, uh, a time-shifted, uh, well, or wingmakers is a time-shifted humanity. Wingmakers is humanity post-Grand Portal. And, and wingmakers are in a position to, in a sense, as the elder brother, um, to come back and, as benefactors, uh, start seeding in the, in the species what the the real objective of humanity is and because in a sense you, you could say before 1998 the whole concept of the grand portal it, it was non-existent in the human vocabulary it just nobody was talking about this this was not even a, a concept in people's mind the closest thing to it would be probably what what people call technological singularity um, which is where humanity is seen as being sort of a part of technology or technology is a part of humanity and that somehow those two were going to become one and that uh, there'd be some sort of a combination of human and machine or human and technology because technology was going to get so smart so much faster than the human brain that it would actually become stronger better you know, more intelligent etc cetera, etc cetera, than humankind and and so that was what was known as technological singularity. Now, sing there's singularity and then there's sovereignty. And sovereignty, as James has talked about it, is the grand portal. Mm -hmm. That's the issue, issues in the sovereignty aspect. And it isn't about singularity in the sense of, you know, we're, we're a host to a technological or superior um, brain or limbs or whatever it might be that we become part machine and part human, um, or that we abdicate our control of the planet to machines because they're so superior in their intellects. So what I think James is saying is, is that it isn't that path. That is a possibility. It's always a possibility that we could go down that road. But the, the road that wingmakers were here to describe isn't that. It's really the going down into the depths of the soul and heart and dredging up the capabilities therein to transform our world to become a soul, a soul environment, not a mind environment, not a ego environment, not a physical environment, but a soul environment, a, an environment that's supportive of soul, that's, uh, that really creates the ambience, if you will, and all of the enablers 
where people can relax and be true to themselves as soul and express as soul and not to have any concerns that that's going to be seen as a weakness, for example, um, or something that will be taken advantage of by others. And so this, this whole notion of, of moving towards the grand portal, moving towards sovereignty, these are the things that our future selves are kind of coming back to our present selves and reminding us that's what you're all about, humankind, to help you discover soul, not to, to cause it to become so bright and so powerful in itself that it actually starts to control the human instrument and people sort of step aside and let technology rule. Um, those are two very different paths, very different roads. And I think what James has been saying in his work is, you know, let's, let's take the soul path. 